Hello fellow astrophotographers and welcome back to our channel. Um, we just came back from a short uh, holiday vacation on the island of Stress. Um, now during this vacation I also took with me some astrophotography gear because the island offers uh, decent dark skies. Now usually I uh, take with me um, the tracker and uh, camera with lens so I can travel to a high spot and hike a bit. But this time I took with me the Skywatcher Eco 6R Pro with encoder and the Red Cat 61. Um, I also took my Sony mirrorless camera to take uh, some shots and make some time lapses with it. Additionally, uh, I prepared a simple adapter so I can attach it uh, to the um, guide scope. Um, shoe of the Red Cat 61 because I am not auto guiding due to the encoder on the array axis, but this enables me to make some time lapses of the tracking of the mount um, and wide field shots of the Milky Way, for example. Um, now, because I took the heavy gear with me, I could not hike upwards to the hills, so I had to scout a few spots prior to visiting Stress. And on the first day when we arrived, I checked those spots out and found a nice secluded spot next to the tarmac road, uh, leading to the small village of Germo. Um, this spot was protected from the wind and also enabled me to shoot targets due to south, because uh, here at home my southern sky is very light polluted and I took this chance uh, to shoot some southern objects on the holiday um, on Island of Stress. Now, because I also wanted to make the most of the time on the island, I optimized uh, the shooting procedure with our autofocus R3, our DC hub power splitter, our flap panel and last but not least, field rotator, which enabled me to frame the targets uh, very accurately especially the targets which are very dim, like for example the blue horse head nebula are problematic for that. You can't really eyeball it uh, regarding the framing, so it came in very handy. And uh, just one quick uh, update, we will shortly release uh, a video regarding ASI air support for our, for our uh, field rotator, um, so stay tuned. And back to the astrophotography. I have chosen three targets. Uh, um, first, uh, the Lagoon Nebula with Trifid uh, Nebula next to it, which is very um, photogenic area, very bright area. Um, the next one was the Blue uh, Horse Head Nebula, which is a bit harder. But with the dark skies on stress, uh, I decided to give it a shot. And the third target was a bit more obscure uh, due to east, so I could image it towards the morning. And it includes Barnard's Galaxy um, and some dark uh, clouds, and some dusty nebula, and also a small planetary nebula called the Little Gem Nebula. Now, I like that framing because it includes three different uh, types of targets. Um, and uh, enables me to shoot, like I said, in the morning after the Lagoon Nebula and the uh, Blue Horsehead horse head Nebula already set and are out of the field of view for shooting. So it's about time I stopped talking. Um, let's take a look at the time lapses of the imaging sessions, uh, some short clips of the gear, and also, last but not least, um, the results of my imaging sessions uh, after stacking and processing. Enjoy! Stay tuned and clear skies. I am uh, here in Croatia on the island of Stres, which has really dark skies. So I decided to bring uh, a setup with me on the family holiday. Red Cat 61 with our field rotator, flap panel and autofocuser. I'm imaging the Blue Horse Nebula and the Lagoon Nebula with a small battery pack and the ThinkPad laptop which has uh, quite big battery so I can do a full session. I just came to chill out. So a few really nice meteors. And just one more quick detail on my 
Skywatcher Eco 6R. I also have uh, the encoder to compensate for the um, error in tracking on the RA axis, and this enables me in combination with our Deep Sky Dead uh, telescope controller to image uh, without the guide scope, without the guiding, which is quite handy. One less component to set up and take care of.